If I was like you, I'd be shitting my panties on industrial gantries ahead of tomorrow's filming. Like tool nerds or pansies, the filming qualities are in the ganges. That's rap. Hulls. Machine rap. It ain't crap. Uh huh. Yeah, boy. Nautical? Looking forward to it. So long as someone or something doesn't anger my lord. I will be slow to anger my friend. Slow, but certain and focused. So just look at all that baked on dry grease. All sorts of kit in there. So that is our first tap. Anything we've done other than this has been a waste of time, hasn't it? Hello Juniper. Hello Juniper. How you doing? You good? There we go. Where are we going then? Oh no! Peter Griffin's got a mustache. What happened to the window? Hi. I'm, I'm not focused. Oh, Don't even oh. try and be funny yet. Oh, God, I'm so excited by today. I'm not going to say what it is yet. It's probably in the bloody title of the film, but... <laughs> Um, yeah, I didn't have a chance to look at it until later. It's it's like 1890s, 1910, so it's 130 years old. Um, yeah, it's quite exciting, really. But bear in mind, this can't be the start of the film because we've got to ape Hansel Rescue. Okay, so, right, so now, bang, we're into it now. Are you, you... Are, are you into it? I'm going to make you look so stupid in that sequence. Al. I know, exactly. Oh, That's the whole point. Perfect. Is that it what you're it. after? Dun, 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 dun. Okay, well, why, why? Why aping Hansel Rescue? First off, been a, um, well, followed his channel for ages, and it was just a case of, I, I, I love his intro. It always makes me smile. And he always, he seems to kind of uh, specialise, well, he does specialise in restore, um, rest, rest, God. Restoration. Restoration of what seems to be kind of like a hundred year old, a hundred and, you know, turn of last century tools. We went to an auction yesterday and uh, placed the bid over the weekend and I thought I'd lost it because all the emails, I didn't realise at the time my email wasn't working, all the emails telling me to pay for the item had vanished until uh, Sunday when I finally got, well yesterday, Monday, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Okay, screw it. Basically, <laughs> what we've got is we bought this at auction and we wanted to, my whole process with this is I want it as an ornament in here in the workshop. It's a great item. Uh, let's, should we, should we, let me show you its features. The big reveal. The big reveal through a, a dun, dun. greasy towel. Yeah. Oh, now I'll tell you what, just come in here and listen to this. So this is a self-advancing pillar drill, a hand cranked self-advancing pillar drill by the silver manufacturing company of Salem, Ohio, USA. So this dates from about 1890, 1900, 1910. So what we're looking at here is 130 years ago, state of the art pillar drill. So they've been, they've been called blacksmith drills. I've seen them called all sorts. It's called a post drill because essentially it sits on a, this is a nice piece of oak. We were gonna remake this as part of the um, project, but we're not now. Um, because this is this is a nice piece of oak, so I think what we'll do is we'll just sand it up and tart it up and that'll be there It's done But this is exactly the kind of thing that basically uh, Hansel Rescue does so just have a listen to this I think can you imagine that noise? 130 years ago in a workshop making what? 
someone's trying to drill some steel. These are for drilling steel. They're a nice slow speed hand crank drill. I can't tell you what speed it is. Obviously you can alter that by how quickly you kind of rotate it. So not only have we got this all stamped up and we'll show you closer versions of this later. We've got advanced number 12 on here and we've got the maker's mark on this side. All I've done to this since yesterday is WD-40 the shit out of it. And when, when we saw it yesterday, I mean, thankfully, and I'm, I will show you this actually, where is it here? What I'm gonna do is we're gonna start the breakdown. So I'm gonna take the handle off just to make it that little bit easier. Just look at this. Look at all of that baked on crud. That is just pure grease. And you know what? It's exactly what I wanna see on this because it means all this steel under all this grease, wherever you do this on this machine, it just pulls off layers. Look at, look at this, for example, here. So just look at all that baked on dried grease. Let's get our hands all nice and black. Just look, it's absolutely caked in it. But Al, Al, Al. what? Is it gonna need some Al elbow grease? Yes, when we do the rebuild, but not now, but it will require elbow grease to get us to that point. Flash t-shirt. Buy it. <laughs> do some subliminal shit, okay? Have you um, bought it yet? <laughs> have you bought it yet? Keep doing that through the thing until somebody buys one and then maybe we'll stop. No, we need to do some shots of you just buy it. Just buy it. Why ain't you bought one yet? We can see the figures. We know you're not buying them. <laughs> okay, so back to this. Yeah. Thank you for taking me off topic. There. Sorry. Uh, so come on. Yeah, so what we're going to do is I've done some research on removing grease. Seems as if we can go out there and we can buy some fancy product that's going to do it. None of them seem to do it particularly well. Everyone seems to say paraffin. So what we're going to do is paraffin, try and get the grease off it, take it to pieces, paraffin all the components, then use a solvent to get the paraffin or the oil residue off the item, at which point we're ready for... I think we're going to lacquer this, but I don't know. We're going to, we're going to go there. Today's part one. There will be a part two. What? Well, just because we can't, I can't be painting this and then rebuilding it in a day. So I think what we're going to get to today is the breakdown, the cleanup, the first portion. So let's just get in there and bloody do this. So let's just get that off there. I tried yesterday with uh, cellulose thinners. It doesn't touch that grease. So I thought it would. Cut. Cup of tea for Mark. Get your cup of tea and then we'll jump back into it. Thanks, boss man. You've all had a good look at it. Uh, so let's start the breakdown. I mean, just look at this grease that's on here. It's like little dried lumps of cat turd, isn't it? It's just, you know, let's face it, these must have gone out of use before the Second World War when everything started getting electric motors attached to it. So where has it been? Because whoever's had it, there isn't a teeth broken off any of these gears. It's been really well looked after. You might look at this and go, what do you mean it's been looked after? But it's absolutely clarted in grease which has stopped the rust getting to everything. So thanks, Guy. Um, I suppose we should talk about where we found this. Essentially, I found this on an auction site. I'm gonna, I'm gonna take it to pieces as we do that because we're, um, we've got to get the project moving on. So I think what we're gonna try and do is do this breakdown with uh, time-specific spanners. And I have a lovely old box here of some like really interesting sized uh, spadgers. You know, there's all sorts of stuff in there. There's a lovely set of old BSA spanners there. Um, so yeah, opportunity to use those. But essentially what we're going to do is we're going to see what this um, paraffin's like as a degreasing agent. So I'm just going to drop all the nuts and small bits and pieces that come off this into here. Um, I think we can, we can safely take that off now. So we'll just pop that on the anvil. In fact, no we won't, we'll pop it straight in there and we'll start this whole process off. So paraffin or kerosene. I've written it on there for you. So let's get that in there. Well, 
let's hope this all comes to peace in nice, kind of, without shearing anything off. Oh, look at that. Beautiful, the flywheel. Look at the detail on that, the bent spokes. Beautiful. Into a container of, there isn't that, isn't a crack, is it? No, it isn't. Let's get it coated up. Look at that, God. We might be the first people in here, you know. Since it's built? Well, maybe. We might be the first people, which is always what you want. So this is the little kind of pawl and kind of, what would you call it? Is it a ratchet or a cam of some description? There's a cam on here which operates it. So there we go, springs intact. But just look at all that shit on there. Literally caked in it, isn't it? Are you keeping an eye on where these bits and like I'm too where they go, or are you just too knowledgeable? That. Too good for that, Mark. <laughs> ah, we are missing the little handle on the top. So that looks like that'll be a remake for us. I did notice some of these when I've done a search have a little winding handle, and there's all our gearing for the automatic advance. Crank handle. And another nut there. I can't believe some of these are finger tight. Oh look, they're all finger tight. So crank handle. You see, I was going to remake that. I thought, oh, well, you know, we'll have to remake that. But that's like, look at the wear on that. And I think it'll detract from it. And let's just keep it. What is that? Is that a bit That's of the hand. Yeah, uh, it looks like beach. So that comes off there. So... Nothing written on there. Bolt in there, that in there. Spin the whole thing around. Oh, that looks a lot lighter now. Just to get at this side here. So that that's just coming out. So that adjusts is that adjusts the ratchet. That adjusts the speed of the feed. The advancing feed. Hence why it's called the advancing. Speed. We got that beautiful maker's mark there. Can you just see it? Should we expose it a little bit more? Use one of our old spadges on there. Oh, look at that, perfect. Perfect size. Okay, oh, give that a reverse. There you go, so, right. So that looks like what's gonna happen now is this is gonna come out. There we go. Takes out our crown gear. So we'll just, here, have a little look at this. Just look at all of that. Look at the hairs. All sorts of kit in there. But we don't need that slipping around. So let's just try and get as much of that off as we can. So like I say, all of that's like a, it's better than a, it's better than it being in a air-free environment almost, or a water and air-free environment because the rust just can't get through it. So look at all the teeth on there. Got a little keyway here too. Now that might have been fitted from the inside, so that's our little keyway. Nope. These are all five eights. They're all old spanners, so no, not surprised that they fit. There's our cam that drives the feed. So there's your oiling point. See that driven in there? Yeah. We've got a bit of finish. That is just nicely popping off. Do those two come apart? They probably don't. Let's not try. Let's just scrape. Ah, right now there is this little thing that I found. So we'll push that there. There's that little tab which drives along in there. You'll see that in a minute. I'm going to be very impressed if you remember where everything goes. Well, it's not very complicated. I'm, I've taken to pieces. When we were in the oil field, we used to take things to pieces that cost more than a Ferrari. So I think we can... Go on then, oil field. Yeah. A little bit of owl background. What were uh, you in oil fields for? Watson? I was what they call a... Well, we were 
oh, I was a wireline engineer. Um, we surveyed oil wells essentially and then told companies where the oil was within a well. That was very basically it. But as part of that, uh, I worked with explosives and shape charges and all of that stuff, which is really quite cool. But um, I was based in Libya and it was before the second Gulf War and it was just after 9-11 and basically, yeah, Libya wasn't the greatest place to be. How many visa photographs do you need to provide to get a visa to go to Libya as a British citizen? How many do you think? Is it 10, Mark? 13. I think it was 60. 60? 60. Crazy, isn't it? It's practically enough to provide every security depot in Libya with your photograph. Uh, okay, so yeah, so we've got a keyway there. But I mean, just look at this crud. It's brilliant. It's absolutely... Oh, have we got more finish? Is that a little bit... This is what I was going to try and tell... That, that, look, is that just the little... Oh, look. Green. A hundred years worth of crud. But just see the little details in the casting there. You know, this, this chamfer and then returned around to produce this bull nose. It's quite a nice thing, isn't it? Obviously, we had a lot more aesthetic appreciation for things back then that we just, you know, is just now it's uneconomical to include it in a, a tool. There again, that really dry green. Actually, it's very similar to this. And that's of the same era, that's 1920s. So we've done a video on that, haven't we? Okay, so, well, let's look at it. Let's look at it. Let's look at its features. But the other thing with this paint is it does probably have lead in it. So I think we'll try and match that colour. Right. Really dark, or we just paint it with a modern Aral dye, but I just think it spoils the look. It wants to be that pastely green. So I think that is the only thing that I've seen that is, is broken. And I think what it was is this is the spanner, the original spanner for functioning, for functioning that tightening. And what's happened at some point is a portion of it's broken off and it's been badly welded back together. And I just think that is the original nut welded onto the spanner. So now that is something that we might try and look into remaking. Might even call on a certain blacksmith's help. Oh, really? Well, yeah, I just think, you know, maybe that's a little commission that we could give him to produce as a, you know, we could maybe, we could revert to this screw and actually just create a spanner a nice spanner that you know even if i if he made this and i filed the spadger hole so yeah i think what we'll do is we won't bother with that because that can be wire brushed i'm getting so sick of not having my vice set up I think it's just sticking on all of that crudment well on there, but I don't want to force that. I don't want to force it at all. Should we try the other way? Yeah. Yeah, no. Qu'est-ce que c'est ça? Just oil. Light machine oil. everywhere. I mean we're getting there. It's just very tight there. It's been mushroomed over.
fucking hell. And here's the the meat and meat and veg of it all. And what does that say? Silver. The Silver Manufacturing Company, Salem, Ohio, USA. But I think these were made to several different patents, and I think they were made for several different companies because you do see them with other names on there. So I think Silver Manufacturing were one of them, but um, this is quite a well-known post drill type. And put it this way, I'll tell you what, it's one of the first ones that I've seen. So you know, I'll keep an eye out for that, but it's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Oh, mm, oily. Just look at, these are forged. Just look at how sharp that forging, can you see the little spurs? Or it's been kind of forged in some bloody great machine. Brilliant. Ain't life brilliant? There's a big splash of grease on there, so if I hit it, I don't want it to come back and haunt me. Or my dirty shed t-shirt. Just buy it. So we've got who made this, and then who sold it. Newcastle upon Tyne. Brilliant. Love that. I love the fact it's Newcastle as well. Does that count? What? Does that count as a dropsy? No. Oh. No, no. People get disappointed if there's not a dropsy. I know. Right. I mean, this. Don't let it make you angry. See, that is just not moving anywhere. So, what I'm gonna do is very, very carefully just try and open that up. There you go. You legend. It's just a different approach. I mean, that's actually barely done anything. But, have we got it off? Oh. There you go. Okay. Fraudulent. Seems to be a little bit of damage there, but I actually think that's casting. So, and actually it's rare that these have all of these components still with them. Uh, so, what now? Well, really, I think what we can do It wasn't a bloody dropsy, all right. It was. So I think what how this would have happened is this would have been shipped from America into the UK in a box full of components. So I think what our friend Henry Osborne did is he, being the tool and machinery merchant, he would have then attached that drill to this in his work in his shop. Then it becomes the sal saleable item. But as a process for, as a process as a drill, the fact that all of these components are bolted onto a piece of wood, which is unstable in humidity and kind of changes in temperature. So essentially that drill has always got this element of movement in it. So it's a kind of, it was state of the art at the time now, but you know, when you want a pillar drill in this day and age, you want something that's completely rigid, held together when you're using wood as a backing for this and you're attempting to kind of drill things and get everything positioned right and, and all of that, I think that's when this falls to pieces, really. By today's standards, it would be considered, it, 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 it's an ornament now. I, I think we'll try and use it, but it is really an ornament. There's that much oil on this timber that it just isn't gonna, paint isn't gonna stick to it. So this is gonna have to be something else. Try and get through that, all that grease, see what we're actually dealing with. Let's just, let's just lay into it a little bit with a, 
wire brush. Try not to get that dust up as well. Actually, that's working better, isn't it? But I think this is a quarter sawn, quarter sawn piece of oak. I suppose we could just mount on the back, couldn't we? The smaller components that we put separately, they've not got as much grease on them, so we're going to get those wire wheeled now. Um, you're all going to be commenting on the wire wheel because there isn't any wire on it. <laughs> Beautifully sharp for 130 years old, aren't they? Okay. Well, I think the next process after that is that needs to go in acetone. Actually, I suppose we can re black these, can't we? So it's just to degrease it. So, what we will do is we'll do some more of those. I think we can we can jump to we can jump to one of these components, which we'll do on the wire wheel, and then we'll you know we're not gonna, we don't have to show each and every component here, but we'll do a different process on the big flywheel. I e we'll get the grinder and do it with a disc. So that that paraffin actually, just for anyone watching who does like this kind of thing, who needs to degrease, you know, heavily heavily greased or heavily coated components it seems to it does seem to soften it it obviously works better with actually that was interesting I should have shown that but I've rubbed it the the grease underneath the surface was still dry so it just shows that actually that paraffin hasn't really penetrated that far but uh, this is the slog portion of it just trying to get all that crud off to get to a point where we can wire wheel it because if we wire wheel it before that grease is on, the, the wire wheel just gets covered in grease and kind of just smudges the grease around is what I think is all found. But so that's what we'll do for the first portion of this. Some of these components will then get wire brushed. The flywheel will get wire brushed with a, um, a grinder with a wire wheel attachment. So I think what we'll do is we'll come back to you when we're at that point. Now is that more black paint? What do you think? Black paint? Maybe. You see, it's like bone dry, it's practically flaking off. Absolutely caked in. Has that been undercut? Well, it has. Oh, that seems to be a process too far. Uh, you see what I mean about just the crap just getting smothered around. So look, that's been machined cleaned up by machine but then if you can see in there it, it, at the bottom it's been undercut and that's just like I can't unless this is a cast item that's then just been machined up maybe that's what it is see the pity that it is a hundred years old so yeah we're not going to go as far as my mechanic and start polishing all these components because I don't think it's going to look right on the drill um, but yeah, so the idea is to just clean and degrease. See, there we go. I mean, it still looks like shit, doesn't it? So it's still coated in grease. That's the problem we've got. So we maybe need to come up with a better plan about how to actually clean these items up. That doesn't look like we've done anything to it, does it? 
Yeah, so our biggest challenge is just getting all the crap off everything, really. This is this is heavily pitted. I mean, what we could do is we could stick this on the we could stick this on the lathe and do a pass across the front here and a pass down the side, and this would come up like brand new metal. But I, I think that's doing this whole thing a disservice. You know, I, I don't like machines that even look like they've been. I think it completely ruins a machine to have it bright and shiny something from this era because it looks wrong and also you know in theory you've taken all the kind of original paint and everything off my approach has always been to be it's like this you know when i got this we did exactly the same with it but you know it, it looks better for being like it does I, I like the look of this machine much more than if we'd have painted it all bright red and everything else they kind of it makes them kind of look tacky i suppose if you were a 130 year old man and someone came along and did a million pounds of plastic surgery on you, you'd look like a dried up old ball bag still at the end of it, wouldn't you? So, you know, maybe that's a lesson for us all. brought up those gears nice and nice and sharply they were all full of crud before so we're missing a handle so I think what we'll do is let's just just show you how else we'd go about this wire brushes for this there's a system there's a system oh yeah this is really gonna throw up some shit Do you want to be in the Black Bogey Brigade? Well, come along today, because you will be. Held it, held it for a beat at the end. It allows you, so you can edit it nicely, Mark. I mean, that that was all for you. All of that You're thing such a professional. was for you. Yeah, so we'll be using those two processes to basically go through everything. So what I'll do is I'll let Mark in there and we'll have a look at that. Beautiful, Stephanie. <laughs> Johnny Five, yeah, looks good. Uh... So yeah, basically, um, that is what we've got to do to every component. To be quite honest with you, I'm a bit worried about these because once you've done all this and you've removed the wire, uh, the um, see, there's a few flash marks on there, and there's part of me that's like, oh, we could sit here and we could sand all those. So then I, but you know what? No, because that machine doesn't want to be gleaming at you. It's 130 years old. Let it be 130 years old. <sighs> um, but what we will do is we have a handle to make. So. There's one highlight in brass on this thing, which is this kind of thing. I don't know what it's called. It's the kind of thing that attaches the like piston, the piston that pushes the well, thread, I suppose, not piston. Oh, <laughs> actually, ah, okay. So it's not threaded. So that might help us actually. It's not threaded. What's so, not threaded? Uh, that hole where the handle fits. So essentially what we have is for all intents and purposes, we have this kind of setup. So that has a little wheel on the top, which is basically what that does is that allows you to lower the lower the whole mechanism. So it's just above your work material. So when you start cranking it and the 
uh, little gear at the top pushes the ratchet gear pushes this round and advances the the kind of drill bit or feeds the drill bit into the work that's missing so perfect let's let's make that um, and go from there uh, okay come with me so by the time that goes to a circle the circle is going to be quite small I don't think that's right I think it's too small and that's the only brass we've got. Aluminium, forget it. Is this another turn the camera off? Yeah. Why ain't you built one yet? <laughs> this is the problem we've got. I don't want this to just turn into a massive spend f